In this segment, we want to begin taking a look at now that you've got your uh, clips imported into your project and you've set up your events and libraries, we want to begin taking the clips and, and moving them down onto the timeline to actually begin building a show. For this part, we just kind of want to look at the mechanics of how to move clips down onto the timeline and arrange them in the order that you want them to appear. So, uh, as you recall, up in the upper left corner of the screen here, we have our clip browser and we have a bunch of clips up here. Some of those are, uh, you know, from further away, uh, from a long ways away from the waterfall and getting progressively closer and closer. And then we also have views of, you know, water on, on uh, rocks and moss and that sort of thing. So I have a lot of nice clips here that we can use to tell the story that we want to tell. Um, okay, so first of all, you need to begin to think about how you want to arrange these because it's not just all about the mechanics, it's also about sort of walking the viewer through the experience of, you know, hiking into this. So you might, for example, traditionally want to start with a, a fairly wide view where you sort of set up the fact that we're, you know, hiking closer and closer to this waterfall. So we could, for example, begin with this clip number five. It's labeled right down at the bottom down here. Now we want to move this clip down onto the timeline um, and uh, place it at the far left edge of the timeline down here because remember we want to arrange these clips from left to right in the order in which we want the viewer to see them. So if I want to start with clip number five, and by the way, you're not, you know, you can make changes uh, at any point in the process here. I'm just going to click on the clip to highlight it in yellow, that yellow border around the edge. Notice now that there's a little hand that appears over the center of that, and I can click and drag that onto the screen. So I'm holding down the left mouse button as I pull that clip down on the timeline. Now you'll notice even though I have the clip just sort of hovering in space here, that there's a blue outline at the far left edge of the timeline that's the same size as the clip that I'm bringing down. One of the nice features of Final Cut Pro 10 is that it has this thing called a magnetic timeline. And that just means that it's actually just going to put the clip where it should be since this is the first clip in the program. When I let go of the mouse button, it's just going to lay it over toward the edge of the, of the timeline like that. Now if I go back up to the browser window and decide what I want the next clip to be, maybe I want to move into a little bit closer view of the waterfall. Again, I'm just going to click on it uh, to highlight it. Now my mouse pointer has changed into the little hand and that means I can now grab the clip and drag it down onto the timeline. And again, it doesn't matter where I put this, uh, Final Cut Pro is just going to add it or, or what's called append it to the first clip that I put down and stick it on like that. Now notice the two different sizes of clips that we have here. The first clip is longer in terms of minutes and seconds than the second clip, which is why it takes up more space horizontally along the length of the timeline here. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit and then I'll go up and grab another clip and drag it down onto the timeline as well and drop it there like that. So you can see that this clip now is much longer than the first two clips that we brought down. Now, you might decide that you want to play the clips uh, to see what you've created so far. So to do that, there's a line along the uh, top of the, uh, or along the left edge of the timeline here called the playhead, this line that has a little kind of triangle at the top up here. The playhead is called that because when you go to play the timeline, it's going to begin playing from the point at which this is positioned on the timeline. I can move the playhead by grabbing the little triangle up here and dragging it by holding down the left mouse button and pulling left and right, or I can just click anywhere along the timeline and it'll, le it'll leap to that position. So before you begin playing the timeline, decide which portion you want to watch, and then position the playhead where you want to start watching. You'll also notice that as I hover over the timeline, wherever the mouse pointer is, there's a red line there called a skimmer, and that still lets me kind of skim over clips and see what they are. So either the timeline will do that for you, or the skimmer can do it as well. You don't have to hold down the mouse button when you're moving the skimmer. Okay, so I'm gonna position the playhead right at the beginning here. Now these clips are gonna be fairly loud, so when I go to play the clips here, you'll hear that loud waterfall noise. And let me just show you what they look like in real time. So I'm gonna push the play button up here in the viewer. You can also alternately push the space bar on the keyboard. Um, to make the clip start to play if you want to do that instead. So the long space bar here will also act as a play button. Okay, so back to the screen. I'm going to push the play button up here. So you see that this first clip goes on for something like about uh, eight seconds. Is it on 10 video? seconds. 
and then it cuts to that much shorter clip. And notice you can hear people talking in the background. What's cool is you and see then it switches to this clip of some of the kind like of fogginess the in the wood. So like okay, so you've got these different clips that you're working with here of different lengths. Now, if you decide you don't like the order of them, you can reorder them just by grabbing a clip and moving it. So by grabbing again, I'm just going to hold down the left mouse button on the keyboard here while hovering over a particular clip. And then I can hold down the left mouse button and I can drag that clip. Now notice as soon as I picked it up, the other two clips moved over to the beginning of the timeline to make space for it. And then I can just bring this down to the end down here and drop it there. Or I could grab this shorter one and pick it up. And if I position it right over the line between two clips, notice that it opens up a space and lets me drop that clip in between the two. So it's really re easy to reorganize the order of your clips just by picking them up and Final Cut Pro will move them around. You just kind of have to hover over the space where you want to put the clip until it figures out that that's what you want to do and makes a space for that particular clip. If you decide you don't want to use a clip, you can just highlight it. Again, click on it with the left mouse button so that it's highlighted in yellow. And now you can delete that clip. So let's take a look at the keyboard for a second um, when you're going to delete a clip because there's an important uh, point about this. On the keyboard, there's actually two different delete buttons. There's a larger delete button and a smaller delete button uh, up in this section of the keyboard right here. Um, the bigger delete button will completely delete the clip um, and uh, eliminate that space from the timeline. The smaller delete button will actually leave a gap where the clip was located for the length of the clip. So if you have a five second long clip, if you use this delete button, it'll leave a five second gap in your timeline, whereas the bigger delete button here will actually delete the entire clip and scoot everything over. So if we go back to the screen for a second, um, I'm going to select this short clip and hit the delete button, and it'll delete the clip and move everything else over. Or if I undo that, now if I use the, the smaller delete button, it'll delete the clip, but you'll notice that it's left a space where the clip was. So um, you can go in and, and fill that with some other clip if you want at that, that's exactly the same length. Keep in mind, though, that if you leave that gap in there, that gap is basically black, a black screen with no sound. So in this case, you'd have a five second long just gap in your program. So I'm going to highlight that and use the big delete button to delete it. Now, another important thing about this kind of editing is that people refer to it as non-destructive editing, meaning that when I, when I grab a clip up here and move it down onto the timeline, I'm not actually removing the clip from the browser up there. I'm sort of putting a copy of it down on the timeline. So this clip is, is the same as the clip up here, but anything that I do to the clip on the timeline has no effect on the, on the original clip that's up here in the browser. So I can bring the same clip down again and not make it, drop a duplicate if I want. I'll delete that. Um, or I can take this clip and do things to it, add filters to it that change the color, or chop it up, or do a variety of things, and it has no effect on the original clip up here. So it's non-destructive because whatever I do on the timeline stays on the timeline and doesn't have any effect on the original clip up here. So I can go back and use that again later on if I want. Okay, so we've dropped a few clips on the timeline here. We've got three different clips that add up to a total of about uh, a minute and, you know, and 20 seconds or so. Let's say now that I played this and I'm not happy, um, I'm happy with the order of the clips, but I'm not happy with the length of them. Because a big part of editing is pacing, making the clips just long enough that the viewer is seeing the clip for just the right amount of time, but not so long that they're tired of watching it or, or not long enough that they don't really have a chance to appreciate what it was that they just looked at. Okay, so I'm going to uh, do something called trimming to adjust the length of the clips. One, one case where you might want to do that is this clip, for example, uh, is pretty long, longer than it needs to be for the viewer to really be able to appreciate what it is they're seeing, understand it, and be ready to move on to some new material. Now, trimming allows me to cut time either off the beginning of the clip or off of the end of the clip. And so to do that, I just need to, on the timeline, move the mouse pointer close to the beginning of the clip over here on the left or to the end of the clip over here on the right. Let me do, uh, focus on the beginning here. I'm going to kind of zoom in on this so you can see what I'm talking about. So right now the mouse pointer is this arrow, but as soon as I get really close to that yellow edge on the left of the clip, it changes to that symbol with the two-headed arrow and the little film strip. Or if I move over to the right edge here, it does the same thing on this side. 
So that's the trim tool. And what the trim tool lets me do is cut off a portion of the beginning of the clip here. So I'm basically moving this way and trimming off as much of the clip as I want to create a new beginning point further in. So I'm going to um, click and hold the mouse button down. Notice that that yellow line changes to red. So it's showing me this is the edge of the clip that I'm going to trim. And I'm just going to drag this in. And you'll notice that it's pulling over the other clips that are adjacent to it. And then I can go do the same thing at this end. I can just grab the end of the clip over here. So you want to make sure that it highlights that end in yellow so you're not accidentally on the other side of the line and trying to, clump, uh, trying to trim the next clip. So I'm going to trim this one down. Another important thing, important thing that this does for you is you'll notice right up at the top of the window there, it's showing me two time values. The one on the left is the length of the clip, and the one on the right is how much you've trimmed off the clip. So I've trimmed off 6 seconds and 24 frames. There's 7 seconds. In video time, uh, frames are fractions of a second that are a 30th of a second long. So if I trim off, say, uh, 20.15, that's basically a half a second, 20 and a half seconds that I've trimmed off of the clip. So I'm going to keep trimming this down and make it closer to the length of those other clips. Maybe I'll just make it, say, eight seconds long. I want this to be kind of a slow, you know, meditative trip uh, through the forest here. Um, and so I'm going to make each of the clips kind of close to that eight second mark. Now, I'm just kind of adjusting these for length because there's not much happening in these clips. But other times you'd be trimming based on someone speaking or someone walking in uh, to the frame. So you'd have a definite visual or audio cue to follow. Uh, for the length of them. Okay, so I've trimmed all these down to a more similar kind of length. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so you can see that now. And now I can play this and watch what it looks like. And uh, you'll hear that fairly loud waterfall audio as we play it here. So again, something like eight seconds long. Okay, so that's really all that's involved with moving your clips down onto the timeline is just selecting them up in the browser window and then dragging them down onto the timeline. Now, as you do that, you can just bring the entire clip down, which is what we've been doing so far, just by highlighting it and then using the left mouse button to hold it, drag it down on the timeline, positioning it at the end of the clips, or alternately, you can also drag it down and place it in between clips. So you can just as easily um, bring that clip down, and if I hover over the gap between some of the other clips, you'll notice that it'll make a space there and allow me to drop that clip in between other clips instead of putting it at the end if I choose to. And then when I'm ready to trim, I can just um, grab the edge of the clip and drag in to trim like that. Okay, so trimming is a really important skill, something that you'll spend a lot of your time doing when you're putting clips on the timeline because you're oftentimes shooting much more than you'll need of a particular clip. So trimming lets you pick out just the best part or adjust the clip for the length that you want. Now that's one way of trimming. You can also trim clips before you put them on the timeline um, through a, a similar but slightly different process.